So the first thing I want to talk about is being less bad. So what do I mean about by being less bad? I'd prefer to use more positive language, but people know what I mean as soon as I say that. Well, I have found that when people first join Jazz Skills, they're often hungry for new information, which is natural. I get it. I was as well. But improving what you're already doing is probably as important, if not more important, than just adding more things on. Think about how an inchworm walks. So an inchworm will bring its back legs in, arch its back, and then reach forward, right? And keep doing that. It's the same thing. If you're not improving the things that you're bad at, if we're not improving the things that we are no good at and need a lot of polish, then adding on new stuff all the time isn't going to make any difference. So I'm going to list the top few things that level twos should get better at. First off, time. When I say time, I'm not talking about rhythm. I'm talking about time. Now, when people post their playing initially when they arrive, it's very common for me not to be able to count four to the bar in their playing because their time is the last thing that we think about. It's natural. You're going to think about what are the notes? You're going to think about what are the chords? Not the time because nobody's made you. That's why playing with other musicians or tracks, which is what we do on jazz skills, or at least a metronome is so important because if you haven't got to arrive somewhere by a certain time, then you don't know what you need to improve on. And there's, you know, you're not going to say, oh, I need to know about that G minor seven because every time I'm late, right? Because if you end up playing like this, let's take Misty in the key of C. If you think, well, cocktail penis, I don't even like the word. They play like they play like this, don't they? Um, yeah, but you should be able to play in time, shouldn't you? You should be able to have a pulse real time when you're playing, right? That's the important thing. If you're enjoying this lesson, would you please give it a like and subscribe to the channel? Hit the notification bell so you know when there's a new video. A positive comment in the comments section really helps as well. And if it's time to level up your playing and get some freedom, then consider joining us on Jazz Skills. More about that at the end. For now, let's get back to the lesson. So that's the first thing to improve. And if you're not playing in time, which is obviously extremely common, slow down slow down. People seem obsessed with performing speed. Not just my level two students, my level threes are like this as well. Performing speed all the time. Learning speed is different. So of course, this is a very different focus to the way you probably learned classically if you had classical lessons. There's nothing in any of these about if you're going to play a tune like and not know that you've played A minor, to E major or E7, right? Then there's no language in there at all, right? Because for us, language is also important, as we shall talk about. We'll come to that. Pedaling is one of the things you can improve the most. Virtually everybody at level two over pedals. So people play like this. It's not clean. As you can see, the right pedal over there has been worn out. Right? Somebody's worn through that pedal. So cleaning up your pedaling is one of the things that can make you sound so much better and cleaner. When I'm demonstrating pedaling, you will see this little button just there turn on and off when I pedal. So that's a pedal down, pedal up, pedal down, pedal up. And you will also see the notes when I pedal go lighter like that. That's no pedal. That is pedal. No pedal, pedal, right? So look how much cleaner we want to be. Especially round areas that are a semitone away from something. We don't want to play like it doesn't matter that something was that close. So I always say to students, use the pedal to do what your fingers cannot do alone. For example, if I take that tune, I was just playing Nearness of You. So getting from here to here, 
can do it without the pedal. But there's only there's only so legato I can be, so I want a little bit. You saw how much pedal I used then, right? Just there. So it's chord down, pedal follows to give my hand enough time to get to the right place. As the chord goes down, pedal comes up. That sort of cleaning up is super important with pedaling. Listen to your own pedaling. I find that one of the most useful things you can do is to record your own playing, but don't do it too often. I would, I try and get students to record their playing every couple of months or so. And the important thing is not to overreact when you hear your own playing, because I do it too, and most people will. You know, don't hate yourself as soon as you hear your own playing, but you'll be able to remove the role of player and listener, separate those two roles and listen, and you'll hear things like overpedaling. Try and count four to your own playing. You'll hear what happens when you do that. Well, you made it to the end of this lesson, so I hope you enjoyed it. Consider joining me on Jazz Skills, where we'll take you on a real journey of fluency, not just throw loads of content at you, but really focus on your transformation, teach you which skills need to be in place, how to work on it, and support you all the way. So I hope you'll join me there. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.